All right, guys, this is the boron update. Uh, I love doing these videos because this fertilizer literally has a very powerful impact on food plots. Extremely powerful impact. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that boron is probably one of the most common shortages of trace minerals in your soil. The opposite of that would be silica, right? You see me add asthma right in here for silica purposes. Usually silica is very abundant for people. So you're, you're, some people have that trade off to where it's not so good. And unfortunately I'm one of them people where I don't think it's that good. And when I have to come in and treat this place, then the ground starts suddenly growing like what you might find in the Midwest healthy. That's my approach to this is because those deer in the Midwest are very heavy, very large rack bucks. Even the does have extremely massive size to them compared to deer around here. And this plot is functioning like that. It's just, I don't have vast, vast quantities of food right now. And maybe down the road that could change and I might be able to expand all the way across the field here. But I'm right now just trying to make this area work as strong as it possibly can. And if you also remember in the previous video, I talked about this yellowing effect and the die off from these plants. Well, uh, I would say it's been reduced by 60% or more. Uh, maybe pushing 70% a lot and i mean a lot of deep green material is erupting out of these dead areas now so the root stimulation with boron is on it does not take long at all for boron to activate in your soil guys this is only six days after one application of boron and I could tell by day three, it was already better. That fast of reaction. It is a very powerful trace mineral for the amount that you need. I mean, if I'm only putting out three pounds per acre max, I get better results with that than I do when I fertilize the hay field and I'm putting three or four tons of fertilizer on it, like your P and K fertilizer. I mean, it's just that powerful of an impact on the root system of these plants. So when the plants are showing this remarkable change, imagine what the roots are doing under the soil. They're pumping upright, they're absorbing lots more water and nutrients and helps really stimulate lots and lots of good plant growth. I know I've covered this video before, but I, I think that some of these videos do bear repeating because I'm trying to stress the value of trace minerals. Uh, right here was a weaker spot that wasn't doing all that hot. And it kind of meanders like this a little bit. There's a lot of rocks right here. And it has actually tripled in height in just a week's time. Even the uh, winter peas right here that were just laying here doing nothing rapidly greened up and added all this growth within that short time frame and it's not even the growing season as far as your typical spring green up see like here we got lots of lots of rocks here but we also have very thick and healthy plants especially for the amount of rocks here and soil space available uh, there are places in here it is now so thick, you can't feel the ground when you walk across it. Like right here, you can't feel the ground. That is thick, thick material. Uh, another thing I wanna mention about boron is on these older leaves, let me find one that's got a good example here. You may think that something is still wrong but it's actually not. Let's see here. Well, I tell you what, it's getting harder and harder to find purple. 
That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. But I know I saw something in here. It might be toward this camera. So let me walk over here a little bit. Okay, I'll use one of these guys. No need to walk any further. All right, so when you have a boron shortage that's already appeared in your leaves or the stems, uh, when you treat plants with boron, that purple color that you see in the plants may not necessarily go away in the older parts of the plant. So you might want to focus on looking at all the new growth that comes on after the application. So if I'm doing that and I'm looking at new growth, green, green, there is no purple. However, there is a little bit of a deformity right here. But that may not necessarily be a trace mineral. That could be from just extreme cold. I can see where deers bit that off. You know, they've been snacking through here really good. So, but everything here that is of new growth is extremely dark green right now. This is probably overall the most consistent protein I've had in the month of February. I am so glad that I changed my system to try to fine tune things to make them better and applying boron four to six weeks earlier than last year. So now this will help the deer through the hardest times of winter, which is January and probably about halfway through February, give or take some length of time on that. Some years we do have extremely cold Februarys that last all the way up till March. But in general, the first couple of weeks of February can be pretty rough here. And now I've got explosive growth. Now that, I don't want to see stem. They won't eat this. Very unlikely that that piece right there is going to be eaten. But that's about the only stemmer I see here. The rest of it's just big, healthy, thick tonnage. And see, it's really hard to get stuff to grow when you got rock clusters like that. That's, that's really bad right there. So I'll work on this area here. It is just covered in rocks. But when you step just a few feet over, look at that, right? Just a spider's web of tonnage in here. This is some of the old um, deer vetch still breaking down, serving its purpose. That stuff can break down quickly or very slowly depending on the situation. But I love it. Boron is exploding. Green has rapidly taken over and it will continue to do so for the rest of the growing season. So now I have abundant growth, which means now the deer can fill themselves up anytime they want to now. As small as my deer density is, this area here will work great in giving deer what they need. If I had a higher deer density, this plot would not look like this period and would be scalped down to the ground. So at least I've finally found the minimum size I need my food plot. Now over here, I got a couple of things that I want to check on. Uh, boron has lit the color up in here. I mean, it is green. There is deep green in here, and even these weeds and onions, there's wild onions growing in there, they have flat out exploded with just an application of boron. So I have no issue whatsoever with onions in here because they are very abundant. but super, super green. You know, it looks like it's overkill on nitrogen. It's that green. Down here, look at how dark green. Section three has turned now, and the growth has more than tripled as far as the tonnage hidden under soybean now. That looks fantastic. Really filled out a lot. Uh, this is where the groundhog's been messing around, and all I'm doing is checking to see if any of these seeds 
that I stuck out here have come up. And let's see here. Yep. So right here's one. They are sprouting. Again, it's only been six days, but some of this other stuff right here is not. So we got, there's, there's one right here, it's coming up. So that's a good sign that the seed I set out is coming up. Now it's just a question of how much fill in I can get out here. I mean, there is a nice, there's actually a pretty nice rebound right here of some of the material that I planted, which is wheats, oats, and uh, cereal rye. I don't think the clover quite did as well, which is one of the plants that suffers greatly when boron levels drop off. They, clover can literally die. One of the first plants to die from it. But overall, that's looking a whole lot better. A lot of vigorous looking sprouts. Section two, super green in there now. I really, really like where this is heading. I just need the rest of the seed to fill in. You know, when you come down here to section three, you know, like I talked about over here, two years worth of restoring. And now we have growth just as abundant as we do in the other areas here. That guy needs to go away. I'll haul him out of here. I don't want his seeds spreading too far. This guy I'm after, very disappointing after I thought I got him out of here, but they're back. Uh, but here, he's been eating this off, and from the looks of it, he can't keep up with it. So very thick, very dense. There's a few pockets in here that are a bit low in quality as far as uh, tonnage produced. And that's mainly being shaded out from these matted soybeans. And I will do a, a video on matted soybeans and try to help you out with that because it's better off if they're standing up like what this one's doing your food plot will perform much better as long as it's standing. When they're matted like this, you're gonna really struggle to get stuff to grow underneath it. You may have to spend more money on seed and it may take three or four attempts to finally get something to take hold. So I will do a personal video on that. Also, I will be doing a video on humic acid. That'll be the next video right after this one. And I'm going to be covering extremely a high value of humic acid and a major discovery that has happened in the past few years. But you can see here, leftover Milo, right? It has been practically picked clean. There's a few small, tiny seeds remaining in there, but I'd say about 95% of all this Milo here has been stripped out. So it's been done birds may have contributed to that or or deer most likely deer and it's been picked clean so i really like where this is heading it's just i'm not counting on it being as thick and as lush as far as a consistent looking plot this year due to other weather mishaps so there you go guys a walk through with boron <clears throat> sorry about that with boron flat out getting it done. So the plot is waking up and I consider this a good reset and it's ready to be mowed down again. Have a good one.